Hi everybody, welcome to our Bracket About Nothing, Street Fighter 6 Intermediate, number 9. I'm Malith, and I'm joined by my coach, commentator, Captain No Fun, aka GeForce. Welcome to the commentary booth. Oh, it is excellent to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, Captain No Fun reporting for duty, and I am excited to watch some intermediate level Street Fighter. Uh, it's always good to have tournaments like this where you're competing in your skill level. That way, fighters get to get a feel for the tournament scene with the risk of getting blown up decisively, you know, mitigated. Absolutely. And we've got quite a few regulars here. We've got a few, I think a few newer people. We've got a returning player, Plutow. Some of our older band members may remember him if they've been around for Strive a lot. Um, he did a lot of coaching and just helping out in the server, being very helpful. But they are back now for Street Fighter, so I'm excited to see how well he'll do. Really excited. It's always interesting to be involved and in watching a community for the first time because, you know, when you're a regular, you're, you're used to seeing characters play a certain way and learning the individual beats and bobs especially at the intermediate level is something to you know it's something that i relish in absolutely and so specifically when we say intermediate for us it's if you're a first time enter in this bracket you have to be below 1500 mr master rating so that's, that's basically like the the rating you just get dropped out if you you know just when you first reach master um and that's you know I mean, people can argue about it, but I think that's a fairly okay, you know, de denominator of where you're up above intermediate. If you can actually get into master and you know start actually winning matches in there. Definitely, I agree with that mindset, and I do appreciate having like a strong binary. Uh, Fifteen hundred at master rank is roughly equivalent to diamond five. Uh, you pretty much shown that you've played the game. You played the game regularly. You know what wins but the overall language of the game isn't, you know, fully developed. You know, you can have you can have a, a conversation, but you got to look at your cheat sheet a bit. All right. I think we are getting our first match. Our players are slowly joining in. First up, we will have Filler Instinct versus the AC0. Is that like a D&D &D reference there, maybe? Yo, I love these names, especially Filler Instinct. That yeah, yeah. Dude, wordplay, wordplay, A plus. Oh. By the way, uh, these matches first to two. They are first to two up until finals. So grand fi winners finals, losers finals, grand finals. Excellent. What do you think is the unique mentality of a first to two versus, say, a first to three? You, I mean, it's definitely you definitely have less time to adapt, of course. Um, so you have to have you have to be really strong in your just your base game plan. Um, knowing the matchups obviously really helps, um, and that's kind of one part of what takes you from a beginner to an intermediate to an expert is knowing all those nuances of the matchups, um, and then having just your base plan and then like at least a few other layers that you can you know switch up to when your opponent inevitably adapts because they are not your opponents at the least at the upper end of our bracket here they're not beginners they are intermediates so they are going to have some skill you know to be able to adapt they aren't going to fall for the same thing over and over and over yeah i agree uh, wholeheartedly a first of two especially with a volatile game like street fighter 6 you need to have a very strong game early on and hold on to it, but also be mindful of the adjustments and recognize when you're either making a mistake with your game plan or understanding that you're getting hit because your opponent is adapted. With two wins, we don't have a lot of wiggle room, so if you could get a really strong early lead, it's going to be that much harder to come back from. And of course, the, uh, the question you always have to ask, how old is your opponent? Are they vulnerable to drive impact? Uh, James Chen had that amazing tweet. You read, you you hear about that, Malice? I, I did not. Please tell us. Please tell us. Uh, Malice, basically, uh, for those who don't know, James Chen is one of the official commentators mm -hmm. for Street Fighter. In fact, he's so official, he's he's in the cap, he's in the commentary pack, and he made a gigantic thread about how he is unable to react to Drive Impact. Like oh wait, something... I think I remember this. Please go on. 
Yeah, and, you know, I do get it where the drive impact is difficult to react to. It is 26 frames, but when you are juggling a lot of things, or as we call it in the fighting game community, the mental stack, 26 frames could feel like four. And when you're not looking for it, it's going to pop you. Which is why a big cheat, cheat is in quotation marks, that some people do is that they up the volume of drive impact to max volume because the human brain can react to audio stimuli faster than visual stimuli. Absolutely. Having, I know a lot of people, they play like with the game sounds turned down or turned off even, they play with their own music. And that's great, obviously. You, you wanna have fun when you're playing the game and you wanna have your own music. And not, not, not a lot of people are fans of the Street Fighter Six soundtrack. There are some good ones in there, but you know, it's very different. Um, but I having good am... headphones, it's, it's just just listen to the sounds. It helps out so much. Uh, okay, this is where I have my controversial opinion. I actually love the soundtrack in Street Fighter VI, and there's a lot of character nuances and music yeah. theory being applied to it that uh, I don't think we're here for because we're here to like watch fist meet face. <laughs> well, well here's, here's my opinion. I'm not in love with all of them. There are some, though, that I am a big fan of. I, I love Geefs. I love Eds. I love Giles. I know that's a me too. Me too. One. Giles no, is like Giles. my prev maybe like top two. I'm not sure which is maybe like Geef and Guile probably one and two for me. Well, with Taco playing, hopefully we'll hear the Guile soundtrack. No, it's uh, Ryu for me. Uh, we yeah. have Filler Instinct versus uh, Taiko. Guile versus Ryu. A actually okay. a pretty interesting matchup with Guile okay. being able to control the projectiles a lot stronger than Ryu. And Filler is going to land a pretty good uh, yeah. drive rush conversion. Unfortunately, drops the combo. Yeah, gives him some nice confirms from the AC zero with Echo. Um, you know, just nice little jabs into the flash kick. But if that's enough, that's all you need to do really is Kyle sometimes. So both our uh, uh, fighters are near life. Filler will get the early lead, oh, and this is going to be classic for you. Guile wants to approach, unfortunately. The life lead. Is I apologize, there. chat. Okay, <laughs> you can actually see this match now. I apologize. I got distracted. Now, what? Okay, that's, that shows what I'm a Taker professional has streamer to do, here. Yeah. You don't want to have your opponent jump in on you like that, especially as Guile. Taiko was probably caught without charge, and unfortunately. Filler is able to get the jump in just Big like combo. now, show you can. Oh, shit. Oh, drop combo. combo and a DP. That could have been a huge punish as well. That is with the crouching medium kick as Guile. You can get crouching medium kick, crouching medium punch, and a flash kick. Okay, nice jump in there. Good. Double into the flash. Excellent. Will we see the blade set up? No. Instead, Filler is. Interesting choice to use the upside down kick, crouching punch to the level three, but hey, if it gets you the round, go ahead. Bend that meter, Guile. We are up one round each with Filler having the meter advantage. All right, so we are getting actually, both players getting a little pretty jumpy here. Okay, nice little uh, tick throw there. Yeah, they're both getting very jumpy, and unfortunately for Taiko, he's uh, they're not able to land the anti airs, allowing Filler to just yeah dominate the airspace. Yeah, even if you don't have flat. Oh shit! Yeah, oh, there's a flash kick. That could have potentially been death. That was level three on deck. That would have definitely been death, but I think Filler is going to play it nice and simple. Double sweep gets caught. Oh, Taiko wanted a meaty throw, unfortunately. Ah, uh, burned out. Throw too early. Yeah, you're, you got, you have to jump every fireball now. And you, ma you managed to do it. All right, All Filler right. with a strong sewing. Uh, that was definitely the story of the match was Filler understanding the spacing a lot stronger as well as getting the jump-ins. Taiko has the right idea with Guile. Okay, great. Double to flash kick. Throws the Sonic Boom, I like that choice. Try to attack the drive gauge. Meter resource management is the name of the game in Street Fighter VI. Oh, absolutely. That's something I've, because I, I, I'll admit it, I'm a Honda player. So I actually love the character. Um, that was like the first character I was kind of drew through, like even before Sticks. 
Um, but then when Bison came out, I'm like, well, Bison is just better Honda. But surprisingly, it is really easy to spin meter on Bison. Like just doing like EX, like Psycho Crusher, and you just get out of meter so quickly. It is, and Bison, you do get a little meter happy. Uh, just like how Taiko's gonna be happy with that double medium <laughs> confirm. It looks like Taiko's really favoring the double medium punch target combo. It's actually, that was the first combo I learned as Guile, and that took me all the way to my master range. Yeah. As Guile, he obviously has some really strong combos, but just the basics. Boom, flash kick. You know, a little bit on your confirms. On to Bison players crazy, you're disgusting mouth. I'm sorry. I actually I'm not sorry at all, but you know, I just have to say that. What I do want to see from Taiko is to practice the ABC more, always be charging. There could have been a char uh, flash kick right there. Filler because it's re oh, that's gonna be a big combo. Standing heavy. Show you can no cancel to the level three. That's fine. They probably want to shit scare the meter to the next round. Filler is doing a better job controlling the space than Taiko, which is okay. something that we've discussed with before. How do we, who implements their game plan stronger? Oh, I no, don't, I don't. Yeah, no, no, no. I can make it. That that was that was tragic. Yeah, I wonder. So, take C zero. He, he's got. He's unranked as Guile. I'm not sure who his main character is. I know he was approved for some. Um, I think he's got another character, maybe in Masters, below 1500 for sure. He's approving. But Guile might be a newer character for him. This is gonna hurt. Oh, this is going to definitely hurt. That is a full level three combo. A few more moves and Filler will be moving on. Zayso does have, you know, potential here. He is quite a, up quite a bit in Drive Gauge. And uh, get the notifications, please go away. Yeah, Taiko, I like, oh, this patient capable. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Taiko is jumping in at Ryu unprovoked, and Filler just had those anti-airs mm -hmm. on lock. Filler is going to take this first game, two games to zero. Excellent effort from Taiko, especially at the end using more of the booms. Uh, but unfortunately, Filler just understood the tools of their character more. Still, that was definitely a lot of good stuff shown from Taiko with their Guile. Like I said, it looks like they may be a little newer to Guile. Having, you know, those ABCs, like I said, always be charging. Um, having those anti airs as well, even like definitely part of the tricky thing with Kyle is knowing when you have the charge and knowing when you don't, and you know, being able to do like the crouch heavy anti air as well. Uh, not to mention uh, being more confident in just walking up to Ryu. Mm -hmm. uh, even if your opponent is spending fireballs, just two steps parry will do wonders for your ground Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Zangief players had to learn that lesson very early, and anybody with a projectile, we tend to forget that. But just walk and parry, walk and parry, and just by getting close to your opponent, you're going to make them either stop fireballing, or if they are going to fireball, jump in on them, or they're going to commit to something a bit more risky. Mm -hmm. Good old walk and block, and you just got to get in that spacing, the threat zone, and then now you got options. Blocking is an underrated skill in fighting games in general, and with characters with a Dragon Punch like Ryu, blocking a Dragon Punch, mm, mamma mia, that's some spicy damage. Oh yes, everyone loves it. I I kind of miss too in older Street Fighters, you can get like, get like the stun combos. Okay, we, next up we've got Volgarath versus JPH. JPH, this is going to be a very interesting mix-up. Obviously, Kami does not have a projectile, but because of her spin knuckle, she has multiple ways to negate Akuma's fireballs. However, uh, Volgarath playing Akuma has one of the best fireballs in the game. Absolutely. And now Volgarath is actually usually more known as a grappler player. He started Street Fighter VI with Keith. He's played a lot of Potemkin and Strive. Um, but I think... I, I kind of forgot about this, but yeah, he did actually really take the Akuma on when Akuma released. 
All right, JPH, while in burnout, is doing some good damage at Akuma. Akuma does have 1,000 less life than your average Street Fighter character, clocking it at 9,000. When you think so, about that, that's like one less throw you can take, which is a big deal. Yeah, or I, I did the math. A standing heavy attack from Ryu is 800, and a jab is 300. <laughs> Okay. Good approach with JP. Oh, oh no. those are those are those whip dragon punches we were talking about. Whip swinging a dragon punch is death, especially with a fragile character like Akuma. Okay, a little footsies. One thing I wanted to talk about the reason why Akuma's fireball is so good is because if you notice, he doesn't have a lot of animations in the in the startup, meaning it's harder to react to. I think also he moves his hurtbacks more compared to some other characters. Is that correct? Or, or am I tripping? In the chat, can I go ahead and get a fact check on that one? But I would not be surprised if that's happened. Okay, we're going to go for the classic Cami burnout loop. Fortunately, oh, Valgorath got hit buttons. Oh, hits no, doesn't. didn't hit the wall. But the whiff dragon punch. Yeah. I like this choice from JPH. They didn't need the level three, but they used it because you want to make sure your opponent is ding dong dead. Mm -hmm. Sometimes one, two buttons, super, that's all you need. Just don't drop the combo. <laughs> I, uh, we got the copy bosses going. JPH is finding multiple ways of getting in. Great use of the hooligan combination, putting Valgareth into the corner and Valgareth going to push oh. Cammy away Drops the combo. And JPH getting that crouching medium kick. That was the button that helped Punk win Evo. An amazing button. Valgareth getting the wall spot, but unfortunately could not convert off of the opportunity. JPH is still alive. Now JPH is being really smart, jumping around the corner. Bulgarath did, was being pretty aggressive there. You know, moving forward and like jumping out of the corner when they do that, trying to get in your face is a, a potential counter to that. Okay, nice reactions. Nice reactions. Will Volgrath spend the meter? Oh! They, okay, put, they put themselves in burnout. I think we can say that Volgrath does have reactions here. They are anti-airing. They are reacting to the DI. Oh, that was unfortunate, though. Volgrath uh, used a drive impact after a block spin knuckle. Not the best answer on the test, and unfortunately, Valgareth had the cheat sheet, clinches out that round. Okay. Raw overhead. Now, that combo was dropped midway. However, Volgrath was not blocking the toes, and we're going to go get the level three. This is allowing JPH to recover the meter, do some good damage and have good positioning. Oh no! That was, yeah, that was definitely not the meaty spi uh, spiral arrow. No, spiral arrow, especially when blocked up close, is highly unsafe. Volgarath is only a few more hits away from death. Something big is going to need to happen, and unfortunately, the miracle did not happen. JPH is winning two games to zero. Volgarath, unfortunately, will be sent to his double elimination, right? Rest in peace for Volgarath. Is it double elimination? So by yes, the way? this is this is a double elimination bracket. So Volgarath and will be in losers. Cool. This is why I love double elimination tournaments. You 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 have time to reflect on your losses and mm. you know to quote the Aaliyah song, dust yourself off and try again. So yeah, sometimes for a lot of people, it takes time to you know to warm up for a bracket, and especially if you are on stream, you get extremely nervous. And, you know, that's normal. You can get used to it more the more you play, which is why I think, you know, you should join tournaments like this. But, yeah, just having, being warmed up, being in that mindset is a big deal. And it goes to show that tournaments invoke another mind state. You know, it's one thing to be in your house, but to be in a tournament is a high-pressure situation. And even when there's no not a lot of money in line or any money on the line, just the fact that all eyes on you will make you a bit more anxious. All right, next up we're having Kelmo versus Navi. So Kelmo, aka Smart Steer Steve, in game here on the Akuma, on the modern Akuma. And I talked to Kelmo about this. Like, why did they pick modern Akuma? Because uh, they 
they play Strive, and they are extremely, they have extremely good execution. So why Modern? It's just because they felt like they just wanted to not drop shit and have good reactions. No, and I agree. like not take forever to learn the character and all the nuances. I, yeah, Malith, you raise a good point. Like, even when you have good executions, picking modern is a viable uh, choice just because you remove the mental load of execution, allowing you to focus more on the game. And we saw that smart Steer Steve with that perfect uh, knows what they're doing. There's that modern reaction. You don't want to reflex check someone in modern, they have that privilege. And Navi going to want to bully their way in. Well, Steve has a lot of... Uh, oh! Whips. That is a bad move to whip, especially on a Kami with butt, with meter. One for one. We talked about the adjustments. Navi found the adjustments. They're going to be a lot less aggressive in hitting buttons. Okay. And Steve, that... Yeah, yeah, doesn't Steve go for the safe jump. Dead. Gets, gets mm -hmm. punished for the hubris there. Little jump ins, doing some resets. Nice, perfect parry. Excellent, perfect parry. Great way to shift the momentum. However, Steve is not perturbed. They're still going to execute their plan. Yeah, Navi is not quite reacting to all you know all the demon flips here. Sorry, the uh, I forget like the, the the new name. I just call it demon flip. Demon rage. I'll just say, I'll just say demon flip. It should be the round. Double hits off of the Shoryuken. Steve takes it. Now you'll notice that there's some apprehension from Steve to throw many Hadoukens or any Hadoukens. I'm thinking they're mindful of Kami's back fist. Yeah. Kami does have a lot of good ways to punish the fireballs. And you know, Pokemon's fireballs are pretty good, but it is a risky option. Perfect KO. Navi goes, hey, you give me a perfect, I give you a perfect. Two for two. That's your receipt, baby. Oof. Now in the slug out range, you would think that it favors Kami. However, Steve using the demon flip has found multiple ways of opening up Navi. So I think this range right now where they're at, you know, just outside mediums, is going to be Navi's sweet spot. Oh, the empty demon flip. Yeah, Navi has been going for a lot of the parries instead of, you know, just anti-airing. And that's that's how you get you get opened up. You get those throws, those punish counter throws, and those take a lot of damage from you. Not to mention they do damage the drive gauge. Oh, that I don't know if this Yeah, not dead. Just going for the reset. Okay. Navi blocks it. We got death, baby. Yeah, Navi is cleaning up. Especially at that range that we were talking about. Steve was able to flip over Navi several times, get the cross-ups, get a lot of easy punish counters, but Navi's gonna keep it at that medium range. Okay. And okay, now we're seeing a little more fireballs coming up. Switching it up a bit. No safe jump, going to go for the double dash instead. Demon flip punish counter. Another one. I wonder if maybe their mentality with not going to stage up, they're just like, you know, if you DP, that's fine. Because honestly, taking one DP isn't the biggest of deals. But most blocking of the time. a DP is huge. Yes. And you have to consider, even if you hit the DP, that is two, two uh, bars down the drain on your drive meter. This is this range I was talking about. Steve's gonna keep it up close and tight. Ooh, the drive rush into the jab to recover in time. Steve is on match point. Will they spend the meter? Oh, now they gotta spend the meter. They spend the meter. Steve with that level three, giving Cammy a knuckle sandwich and feeding them defeat, sending Navi to losers. Well done, Kelmo, AKA Steve. The real name's Kelmo? They're... Their name in the server is Kelmo. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's like I guess they're doing like a Sagem thing, picking a funny name. Steve definitely had a strong game plan. You saw it. Use fireballs, rely on the safe jump mix-up, and especially use Demon Flip aggressively to get in and cross up Navi. 
Navi did not have the anti-airs ready in the pocket like they would like and just gave Steve air supremacy. Yes. This is going to be the story of most of the tournaments. So to our viewers at home, all 24 of you, thank you for uh, showing up for Bracket About Nothing. Pay attention to the anti-air game. When we first play Street Fighter, the first skill pros tell you to learn is anti-air. And pay attention on who's anti-airing and who's not. And whoever's not getting anti-aired, doing the anti-air, see what happens. Absolutely. Street Fighter 6 is a little weird because drive, in fact, is so prevalent in lower ranks. So it's like, oh my god, I gotta learn how to react to drive impact. But anti-airs, it's like more subtle. You can block a jump in and you feel like like it's bad but it's not like game endingly bad like getting hit by a drive in fact but it is a huge deal if if you're getting jumped in on five times around that's five you know five chances that you just given your opponent for free indeed even if you block the air attack your opponent has free pressure to do whatever they want uh and that's that's saying a lot because you are taking damage to your drive gauge Meanwhile, if we land those five anti-airs, you know what your opponent's not likely to do again? Jump! Meaning you could jump, and you could go beat up your opponent. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting one. Marissa does not have strong reversals or anti-airs. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Ryu does. So let's see if Ryu is going to try to abuse that fact and take to the sky a lot. Yeah, that that is, you know, a potential weakness of Marissa. Obviously, she has some pretty long-reaching pokes in, you know, her underground game. And she's got the armor and armor breaks. So it's it's like scary to fight Mercer on the ground. Uh, oh. Yeah, that, <laughs> nah, but you can do that. And honestly, that's kind of lucky. Yeah, Beg is looking for those whiff punishes with the standing heavy kick. And you notice that they're doing it twice yeah. because the first one is used as a bait. Beg, a.k.a. Hey, Blue Tao, our, our returning hero of the server. Ah, the returning hero playing the gladiator woman. Superman punch, great job knocking down Dexo. So that's going to make some okay. great spacing. When you're Marissa, you really want your opponent in the corner. Good overhead setup with the drive rush. Again, going low. They got grounded. What's the o What's the mix? Okay. Went for the throw. Ooh, I like this use of the standing medium. It is. The standing heavy kick is great spacing. That's medium or heavy kick? Uh, I think that's medium. I, I don't actually, I forget. I, I imagine that's like a medium, like one of those non cancelable standing you know, medium kicks. He did get DI'd earlier, but that seems to not have uh, you know, dissuaded him. Alright, so that pirouette kick Marissa's doing is standing heavy, okay, which has so the same properties on counter hit. Okay, so it is a heavy. It is heavy. Now, Dexo could be using Drive Impact to absorb it because that is one of the worst buttons for Mercy to throw that are Drive Impact and vulnerable. The Shogaki, Ryu used the, uh, did not use the heavy one, meaning that they were minus. So, yes. Uh, Beg is using the, is doing it twice, hoping that Dexo hits a button so that the second kick gets the punish counter, jumps over the fireball. Dexel's in bad spot. You don't want to be cornered by Marissa. Uh, Misses the combo. Unfortunately, Dexel. they're burned out. Oh no, that's not a punish. Ah. Okay, I don't know if this punishes. It does not, and you are dead. Marissa's ability to deal insane damage cannot be understated. Okay. Nice little jab jab combo. Misses the drive rush. That was a drive rush. If you see your opponent carry like that, and oh, I <laughs> uh, had the potential to break the drive impact, but Dexel managed to get him through it. And Very but unfortunately, he had, like you said earlier, Dexel is going through that drive meter extremely quickly. Oh, nice DP on the Superman. Yeah, this and up medium attack is an extremely good button. Dexos better be very careful walking back like that, especially when your opponent oh, has drive gauge. Excellent, or you Oh can. no, this is gonna punish. Here. Oh, misses, misses, this is Dexical stance. Dex is gonna cash it, cash it, Kimmy, come on. Dexel on the board. 
Dexel is on the board. The Marissa train has been slightly derailed. Oh my god, that's like the third time. Air. That's gonna make Marissa think twice before using the Superman punch so willy-nilly. Dexel gets to level three. Okay. I'm noticing Plutal is not going for like the command grabs or any really any of the stances. That's obviously very popular, especially, you know, when you're just learning Marissa, it's a very powerful option people don't know how to deal with. Just, it is a powerful playing, option. Yeah, it's pretty very fundamental, very footsies. We are seeing a very footsies based one, and it's allowing uh, Pete out. Oh, I think that was it. I think that that was them going yeah. for it. They heard me. They're like, oh, I forgot about that. Unfortunately, Dexel heard that too, and they. Uh, the moment is uh. on their side. One to one. It looks like Dexel has found an answer with what? Anti airing, people. Yeah. And you don't have to anti air, just jump in. There are buttons like the Superman punch. Excellent throw. However, Dexel gets caught with the extended uh, hurt box. Fu Tao wanting to bully themselves in. Dexel using the Hoshogi key. It's no longer their turn. Fully charged Gladius is going to punch Dexel right in the face. Okay. Dexel is getting close to that burnout zone. That standing heavy on block takes so much drive gauge. It is. Dexel needs to be aware of either the spacing or to use drive Ooh. impact. There's the spacing. Great whiff punish from Dexel. Now both our competitors are burnt out. This is the time for Dexel to put in some good damage. Dex is going to recover faster. More fireballs. More fireballs, Dexel. Yep, you can chip, chip him. Get at least a little more advantage. Ah, uh, I could have been dipping me. Nice, tick throw. Set point from Dexo. Dexo is starting to understand. Wait, this is Marissa. Let's fireball her to death. Play fireball lame. Fireball the big like body character. Oh my god, I can't believe you do that. Play the Shoto. Yeah, Pluto is starting to get a little careless with these moves. Dexo with the oh, jump in. Punish counter. Punish throw. counter. Excellent. Oh, the shimmy. If yeah, they land the, the level, level three. Shin you Kern! Dexel, come from behind, understood the riddle of Marissa, and has taken that set. If we want to talk about how do you adjust the play, this match is a great example. Dexel was on the back foot. Plutal was bullying their way in. Mm -hmm. Superman punch, use of the standing heavy. But then Dexel understood that Plutal was not anti-airing. Plutal was staying far behind in fireball range and went, yeah, you know what? Have some Hadoukens. Have some Hadoukens. Throw those fireballs. You force your opponent to do something if you throw fireballs. You force... Uh you can't, they have to jump, they have to DI, they have to do something different. That's what we call in the business a forced error. I, I really appreciated that match. I really did. It, Absolutely. It, um, very rarely do you see an adjustment that severe on stream. All right. So next up, we will be having... Our top eight. Um, let's see. Do we need a little bit of a break? I think we just go right into it. Yes, we do need a break. However, let me go ahead and give a shout out to uh, Brackets About Nothing. Remember, people, if you love what you see today, there is more Brackets About Nothing goodness. We got a Grand Blue Open tournament on Sunday, a Sham Show tournament on Tuesday. And for any of that information, please show the band Discord. Band that's in Brackets About Nothing, not discord servers that are banned <laughs> yes Although we, the... <laughs> we do ban people you know if you win well, you, you, our you beginner should, brackets you, you get you get graduated out and aka banned what's the deal with drive impact yeah. <laughs> all right so we will be going on a short break we'll be back in about you know a few minutes or so and then we'll be back with our top eight yeah, don't go anywhere, chat. The brackets aren't about nothing, but these matches mean everything to these fighters and to you who want to learn.
Hello and welcome back. We are at our Street Fighter 6 Intermediate Bracket number 9. We are back with Top 8. I am Malice. I am joined by my co-commentator, Captain No Fun. We're back for some Top 8 action. How are you feeling, Captain? I gotta say, what's the deal with the Top 8? You say Top 8, but only everyone carries about his first, to thir second, and third place. <laughs> That's my really crummy Jerry Seinfeld, by the way. Uh, you know, I was impressed. I didn't know that we had Jerry actually on the mic with us. You know, we were talking before, <laughs> Malith, about, uh, before the street started, we were talking about the music of Street Fighter. I just, can, can we have the Seinfeld theme? You know, maybe. Maybe they'll do a cross- they've done a crossover with a lot, a lot of random shit. Maybe they'll do Seinfeld. Yeah, you know, like, no, the, the way we'll do it is, um... Well, they should program it so whenever you land drive impact, you hear drive impact, bam, 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 because that's how that's how you feel like you feel like the world's biggest joke when you get hit by a drive impact. Oh yeah. God, whenever, like sometimes yeah, you just like I you throw out a heavy button, you get drive impact, and you're like, all right, fine, fine, sure. Yeah, I gotta say, like when I'm losing, I feel like George, like all oh, my mix-ups, blah. Oh. Ken Costanza? <laughs> Jerry Jerry Ryu? Jerry Ryu? Jerry would be the Ryu. Kramer would be DJ because they literally do the same slide. I, I don't feel I don't think George would play Ken. Who would they play? They'd probably play like Oh, Kimberly. he'd be a grappler. George oh, would be yeah, he'd, he'd be a geef. Yeah, he would. And then he would just be salty. All the time. You know, geef flares. I love you, but you are some salty motherfuckers. All right, little, little world, uh, weirdo versus Smart to Steve. Yeah. This is Ryu versus Akuma. Classic Shoto versus Upgrade Shoto. Smart Steer Steve wanting to find their way in, but Weirdo is on the button with those covering normals. Okay. Now, unfortunately, that did not get the wall clip because that was a true combo. However, that was not a true combo. But it's true love that little, little Weirdo was making and landing that big wall splash. Yeah, quick round for I'm a Little Weirdo. Quick burnout into, you know, corner pressure and death. We've got Kelmo trying to fight back. Uh, yeah, that command grab, or at least the teleport. Checked. Kelmo. And Steve is playing a very up close Akuma, and they're wanting to get in close proximity. Got caught hitting buttons. Weirdo, doing a great job keeping Steve's offense stopped. And Steve just panicked right as rush, putting themselves in burnout. And this is going to be Little Weirdo's game. Okay, we got Jab Jab. Yeah, chipped out there. Excellent choice from Weirdo. They understood the board state or the game state. Throw the Hashoga key. Easy chip damage. Was a, that the a, a double perfect, perfect parry on that fireball? Oh, it happens. Oh, my it God. Happens. That close range Akuma Steve is going to try to bully their way in. They okay. are. Oh. oh. Good. Okay, they getting the hits. Kel, Steve, they are burned oh. out right now, but I uh, couldn't quite jab, jab through the DI. That potentially could have been death. But yeah, nice choice from Will with Little Weather here. Steve with the modern reactions. A little weird to decide to test the reflex, try to pop Steve in the kneecap, and unfortunately the reflex check was passed. Modern indeed. Twice. That is why Mo Kel picked modern. We talked about this. Yes. Alright. Excellent nice punish on the drive reversal. Driver's reversal was a good choice, but you are minus six on block. Yeah, and remember, that is like a minus six for most character. That's a medium punish counter. So that's going to be a pretty big combo. However, Steve's unperturbed. Oh, bust out with the OD Shuriken. And this should be death. Punch the Solar Plex Shin Shoyuken. That's got to be the second one for Rudo, correct? That is the second one, and this is still first to two. So this so is not first weirdo. threes yet. Little right. weirdo is hoppy on here. set point. Of course. 
We are, we do like to jump a lot in the intermediate range. You know, jumping feels so great. It's a great way for me to skip neutral, but it opens you up to a show you can just like a seed showed, especially modern reactions. Okay. Doing a little zoning. Kind of, you know. I, I like, you know, when there is, you know, the advice you get a lot with Street Fighter and fighting games in general. When they're in the corner, just stand under the timer. That's a good. T that's a good piece of advice. That's an actual visual way to space yourself out. Yeah, and it, it, it's like because not a lot of buttons reach that far. If they do, it's not like they're usually not going to start pressure, and they're usually risky to throw out. So you can just kind of weave in and out of that range, and they can't move backwards. Right, they well, just have to take your offense. The weirdo has to be very careful about it because they would jump in and the anti-air. He who manages the air manages Street Fighter. We got one game apiece, Steve and Weirdo tied it up. Weirdo using those modern reactions, but more importantly, the modern DP. Little Weirdo has not been able to pop Steve out of the air. And every time Weirdo wants to jump, Steve says, hey, get back to Earth. You know, they're like Will Smith in uh, Independence Day. Yes, yeah, you know, JPHM. Uh, yeah, Kelmo really likes using that button. The you know the standing heavy, the double kicks. Um, every Akuma I've faced ever, they love that button, but it is a risk. Even if you they block the first hit, if they're crouching, you get a punish. Now Steve is close to death. Low okay. and drive gauge. However, they get out of the corner. We're about tied up in life. Steve does have meter. Punish. But I think yeah, with that punish, they're gonna want to win this meter list. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, we're just the gonna walk, walk up. up. Walk up and jab. Sometimes you just need to put your fist in someone's face, Maylith. Yes, I mean, sometimes you just gotta walk at someone. Get ready here, George. Okay. Going. You put Didn't my dick throw! Okay. Yeah, air fireball. Oh, with the Tatsu. Oh, no. Weirdo responding with a Tatsu of his own, and Steve with the OD Shoryuken. We're back. Drive you, impact. You couldn't even drive point. impact back because look at that drive meter. It's nearly done. Burnt out. Yeah, going for the jump ins. You have to. Okay, modern reactions. I was about to say Weirdo was going to tempt fate. And go for a drive impact, but again, modern. We don't want to do that. You can do that when your opponent has no meter oh. or hitting a button like that. This Got should it. close out the round. Don't spend the meter. Excellent. Final game, final round, my friend. Okay. Little Weirdo is still letting Steve jump willy nilly. Okay. Keeping him away, keeping him away, walking up. Play lame, play like a Shoto. Yeah, doing a little neutral jumps. It is a good option sometimes. You can bait out a lot of stuff with it. Up back see in Weirdo here. uses Shoryuken more as a reversal than as an anti-air. And that is not going to be doing yeah. a lot of favors in the coming rounds. Double throw. Okay. Steve's gonna weave in and out. That was a shimmy, hoping that there was a tech throw. Ooh. And Little Weirdo is just gonna jump backwards. They got level three. Show you can end the cancel. Oh, ho, ho. Little Weirdo pulling victory out of the jaws of the street with the full conversion. Level three Shin Show you can. And that's gonna be the game. Well played. I'm a little weirdo. You you, honestly, you didn't play that weird. You played. You played some Ryu. You, you played some pretty solid Ryu. You definitely understand the ground game. Uh, same to you, Steve. Uh, Weirdo, if you are listening to this, just watch out for the anti-air. Steve just had full command of the skies. And I say that a lot, but when you got command of the skies, you are very privileged to just do whatever you want to your opponent. Thank you. All right, so next we will be having up Dexel versus Fighter NP. Now we see Dexel earlier, and they managed to take their match. Uh, that was against Plutal. Yes, Plutal. That was that. kind of went down to the wire there. 
And then Fighter NP. We have not seen them today. So they are a Kami player. Daxel showing great resilience against Plutal with the with the adjustments against the Marissa play. Can Daxel find the adjustments needed to overcome Fighter MP? Meanwhile, this is our first time seeing Fighter MP, and I want to know, will they be using the back fist to try to dodge the fireballs, or will they be using classic Kami movement to muscle her way in? It looks like we're having a Kami mirror. Kami mirror? Mm. Well, she did win Evo. That she, that she did. That she did. You know, I... I have to say... As a Bison player, I almost want to go back to Honda just for that matchup. Alright, so we've got Dexel in the blue. We have Fighter NP in the classic Kami Green. This is a more footsie based fighter. Fighter MP, this is the second time that they try to go for third throw. Third time's a charm. They need to be mindful of their spacing, and unfortunately, they spent all that drive gauge just to get one throw. I always like to look at the drive gauge as a credit card. You know, you could spend now, you'll need to pay later, and you've overdraft. Oh man, your payment's an in interest. Yeah. Yeah, not quite plus there, I don't think, even with the burnout. Another throw. Will you tech backwards? No. You got to be careful when teching Cammy's throw in the middle, in mid screen. If you don't tech, uh, Cammy can throw loop you in the middle. Yeah, back back teching, it is a big deal. It's kind of something you don't hear people talk about a lot, but it's definitely a habit you want to get into. Just especially, you know, just roll backwards, especially with Cammy. Cammy's offense, I like to call it the vortex. You're always stuck in it. It always feels like Cammy is stuck to you. And while that would be a great mental image for some lonely otaku here, in Street Fighter, you don't want Cammy that close. No, no. Yeah, the the knuckles, the you know, the plus frames, the tick throws. You you don't want her on you. And Fighter MP is not. Oh, oh goes for round two. Good parry. Now, Fighter MP was definitely struggling with finding the right button to punish those misplaced spiral arrows, but they found it with that new super. They're going to get to take their first round here. Cammy wins. Actually, no, that was the first game. Okay. First game to Dexel. First game to Dexel. You know, this might be a battle of just, like, who's got the better color? Well, it's obviously the green one. That's classic. Obviously? Are you sure about that? I don't know. The blue's looking pretty good. I don't know, like blue camo? Blue camo paint? No. I mean, she's not hiding anywhere, to be honest. Or hiding much of that outfit. But <laughs> Nah, it's okay. I we celebrate a woman to wear whatever outfit they want to wear. Ooh, the shimmy. She's in the water? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, she's just camouflaging in the water. Yeah, I mean look at that water in the background. Hit in corner. Oh, nice end here. Ah. Uh, good old Crouchy Fighter Mini Kit. Fighter MP is in green and Dex is in blue. Okay. Yeah, Dexel's really got those anti airs on lock. Fighter MP's having trouble getting in. Oh no! Oh, that's not the punish you were looking for. You got some damage, but you could have gotten a whole lot more. The empty. When, you're a, when your opponent whiffs a dragon punch in your face, that is like an all-access pass to the buffet. And when you have an all-access pass to the buffet, you don't get the fried rice. You grab the sushi. You grab the expensive caviar. You grab the ice cream. Don't take your one tray and go home. Get everything. Like, yeah. Like, consider this. There, you can back though. You put them in the corner. Or you just kill them now. Fighter MP gonna go ahead and cash out. Burning Double. out. Oh no, oh. didn't quite get it. I think that was what a misinput. That definitely was a misinput, and more importantly, they put themselves into credit card debt because of it. Okay. Raw Going super. for the Hail Mary. Oh, the jump, but no punish. 
Let's go down the wire here. Both players in burnout. Both. Oh, that's not a punish. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Dexel clutching it out there. Just barely However, avoiding getting punished there and managing to fight back. Yeah, there was definitely some moments where both fighters were not able to fully capitalize the uh, circumstances with the whiff dragon punches and the uh, Miss Super. However, this is not an you know this is not me going. How dare you? I'm so much better of a street fighter. It's more so that uh, these are the things we should be looking out for for our next fight. Yeah, learning your punishes. You don't have to learn the super optimal combo, like the 99%. But you just gotta learn like the good enough, which is, I mean, you got you want to spend your meter. You want to use that to get the damage in. You don't have to get 100% damage, but if you get like 90%, it's probably like a tenth of the effort, and you really you kill the opponent. That's, yeah, that's what you you're wanna, here for, right? You want to kill the opponent. You want to get either all your damage or do a combo that puts you in optimum positioning. The last thing you want to do is burn yourself out and drop your combo. Because then you just went all that way for nothing. In fact, you're probably going to get punished in return if you're whipping that oh, TP yeah. or something. Uh, one of the traps that I fell into, especially... Uh, playing this game was I would get a golden opportunity and then I would just meter dump you know all my drive gauge all my super and that wouldn't kill the round and the problem is all that damage I did is going to be made up by the opponent because I'm in burnout and I can't stop what they're going to do to me mm -hmm. yeah learning kind of my rule of thumb that I, I kind of you follow is spend like one EX like or like one drive rush cancel and your big punish. I mean, unless it's gonna kill, then obviously you just go all out. But if you just spend like one, like two to three bars, you're probably getting really good damage and you're not going all in. But going all in, Volgorath is going to be using Zangief, early spinning power driver, putting the boots to Navi. Navi better be careful with those parries. The parry recovery has been expanded, meaning Zangief can grab you and rush and pile drive. Full combo from Navi, excellent. Okay. Nice little conversion there. Yeah, we've we've heard a lot about how Zangief is now potentially top one. I, I don't know about all of that, but definitely he feels a lot, you know, a lot scarier to fight. It's it's like it's weird. It's like just more more damage, more conversions. He's less punishable in a lot of his stuff. Not to mention the classic grappler game. Anytime you're blocking a strike, you are inviting yourself to be thrown. As pointed out right here. What do you mean by update titles? These titles are updated. Am I missing something? Navi going to try to play this little tight, making Volgarath come to them. However, Volgarath has the life lead, meaning Navi has to approach them. No spin knuckle from Navi. Interesting choice. Dive kick gets tagged in. Two chops. Volgarath is going to complete the full combo and is up in Navi's face. This is not the spot you want to be, especially with no drive gauge. Full. Good conversion, Ooh. and it's time to get serious. Oh, yeah. That was an educated move, and I'm not saying it because Zangief is wearing the librarian outfit. I love that costume from, from Geef. Do you know that his uh, eyeglasses bounce? Uh, no, I never looked at it, but I, I'm not surprised. I, Oh god, I can't I can't stop looking at it now. Yeah, you can really see it in the chops. See? Ooh, nice nice air to air. Fortunately Navi got caught with the recovery frames of the parry punish counter from Volgrath. They're gonna be up against the corner with very little drive gauge left. Volgrath going to spend that OD. Hey, what do we say? What do we say? Spend at least one OD, right Malrath? Yeah, yeah. We did indeed. 
you get a lot of damage for not a lot of drive gauge. And Volgrath being the overachiever used two ODs. Okay. SPD. Go for the Oki. Feel the, yeah, you can feel the desperation from Navi. They are trying to use... They're trying to play a bit riskier, trying to be mean, more in your face, but Volgrath is just seeing us as more opportunities for Ooh. offense. That. I, I honestly, it feels like Volgrath's kind of in his element here. The Akuma, he's, I mean, he's definitely an Akuma fan, but this is like his home. Now that would have been a very difficult match for Zangief to win, especially with Kami's ability to approach the air and Zangief's lack of reversals and anti-air. However, Volgarath made it look interesting. I mean, made it look easy. <laughs> Not interesting, easy. I do like how... Yeah, it is super scary to go up against Geef to get in Geef's face. If you don't have projectile, if you don't have, like, Dalsim limbs... It is super scary because there is always a threat that you try to stagger a bit and you get scooped. You do, but we also have to remember that throws cannot grab you while you're jumping and can't grab you while you're back dashing. And if Volgarath is going to be doing that many throws, just pop in a back dash. That's, that's going to open up so much and make them think twice before throwing you. Mm -hmm. Especially as Kami, you have really good op reset options that are airborne. You've got, like, dive kick. If you can space that well, that is airborne. You can't get scooped. I mean, unless they're, like, super on top. <laughs> they're, like, TK air SPDs. Then that's, that's super hard read from them. Um, but, like, you know, you've got your demon flip. The what you call it? Kami's demon flip. Hooligan combination. Yep. You've got Knuckle, which, of course, I mean, that... The range that hits at, it's hard to get scooped out of that, generally, unless, like I said, they are going for those hard reads. And, you know, as a grappler, sometimes you go for those hard reads. That's what you have to do sometimes. But you can, if you make them go for that and you punish them, they are they are dying. Also, if you want to make a geef sweat, cross them over. Oh, God. Geef has no cross-up defense. Don't remind the geef flares. They're going to send a 50-page rant in our chat. And this is why we say Geef is George Costanza, right? Yes. No cross-up. No cross-up. We live in a society. Jerry, if I do a 360, I should get my damage. George, sometimes you just have to accept. You just have to accept that the opponent... Is playing the game too. By the way, uh, I think Newman would be a JP main. That yes, yes, Newman <laughs> would be a JP main. <laughs> Newman would be a JP main. He would, and he would taunt you. He'd do like to get the stun in the corner, and he would just taunt. Okay, Beg P versus JPH. Kami versus Marissa. Kami has all the mobility tools, and Marissa needs to do what she's doing right now. Put your opponent in the corner. Yes, this is this is like a classic Pixie versus Big Body matchup. Um, I mean, Kami doesn't have less health in this game, but Marissa does so much damage. It is scary. <laughs> I like how a little card goes, a standing 360, do you know how hard that is? <laughs> But George, can you do the standing 720? Ooh, that's not quite a safe jump, apparently. Bag Pete is literally running away with all this damage, and unfortunately, JPH Ooh, is just not finding the way out. Okay, good cross up. Good cross up. That's going to allow them to space out, run away a little bit, but unfortunately. The drive reversal, not the drive rush cancel, keeps Bag P on top of JPH. Yeah, maybe that drive rush cancel was a little ambitious. Now you're in burnout. You're kind of surviving though. Kami is one hit away from death. Ooh, nice little interrupt. Okay, nice tick throw. Yeah, Bag P has a little too many cards on the stack. 
JPH is going to use it to their advantage. This is a critical art. I don't think this will kill, but it's it going to put... It does more health. You were right. 500, 500 more than your Street Fighter. Uh, I bet that. Can. I bet that's like 350 health right there. Like 200. Like 100. Bag P needs to be mindful about using the fully charged Gladius because it extends her heart box much further than an average Gladius. And JBH understanding the assignment. Okay. I, I, Blue Town really loves the driver's cancel in the throw. It is, you know, obviously a really good option. But you do have to be careful with that. Don't burn yourself out like you did last round. Watch out. Keeping the footsies tight. Oh, anti air, and it's going to oh, jump in. Oh, the conversion as well was ready for that punish counter. All for just a single bar of drive gauge. Not even a drive rush cancel, just a single bar of drive gauge. Drops the combo. And first game goes to Blue Tau. Oh, big Superman from Blue Chow here. JPH throwing everything they can. Nice good. Interrupt. Yeah, good interrupt. However, Marissa is in the juggle state, so there was an opportunity for JPH to pile on more damage. I, I wonder, even, even on the... I think, was that a Sandy Medium that hit? I don't, I don't, remember, I don't remember at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if you could drive rush and then do more problems. Okay. Nice preservation of the drive gauge from JPH. However, uh, Putao about to burn themselves out. JPH saw the opportunity, but unfortunately ate a Gladius for their trouble. Oh no! The drive rush in misses, misses the conversion. And went for the spin knuckle, but the standing light stopped it. Or was that a standing light? You know, I don't actually know anymore. Standing medium. Standing medium. It did the look like a medium. Are, the animations look very similar. Here's that conversion off of the punish counter standing heavy that we're talking about. And that's a look, lot of damage. Yeah, that is that meterless. Okay. Busting out with the super. Honestly, I think Flute Tau's kind of okay with that. That is going to be the game. Lutao definitely in their element, going slow, uh, you know, blow for blow against Kami. Marissa will win out just because of the damage output. Yeah, that's kind of the thing with these matchups. These characters like Marissa, like Geef too, they do a lot of damage. They just maybe have you know troubles in neutral and getting you know getting those hits, but when they hit, they hurt. Oh man, Marissa hurts like a truck. All right, next up we will be having Fighter NP versus Volgares. So this is losers round two in our top eight here. Volgares switching to the Zangief has done perfectly well for them. Fighter MP, uh, what's Fighter MP going to be playing? Well, they were on the Kami last time we saw them. And we Fighter did MP. see- yeah. Fighter MP oh, going with Ken. Ken. Ken, one of the most overhated characters in Street Fighter. This and the man master's can... level Ken. Ken can do it all. Can now, remember... he do it? Can he do it? Can he? Is he Knuff? We'll have to see. They are getting in there very shortly here. So Ken is probably the most versatile character in Street Fighter. Some may say weak as Shoto, whatever. Still one of the most overplayed, uh, oh, the top represented character in EVO. Modern Ken 2. Disgusting. I love it. Oh, and we're starting off with Dragon Lash. Okay, yeah, you know this fighter in play. He's here to game. 
He is, and uh, we were talking about how you gotta be willing to get in Key's face, and that's what Fighter MP is doing right now. Yeah, you got. Oh, and that's what we were talking about as well. You got in Key's face, and you got scooped. Yeah, now, you, you if you're a, out of it, you need a tight offense. Can's back throw, ridiculous corner carry properties. Okay. Ooh, nice perfect parry. Nice perfect parry indeed. Good awareness yeah. from Val Valgarath. And another back throw. Fire MP really wants out of that corner. Unfortunately, ah, could not drop Zangief. There's a DP, but it's whip. Big damage. Come on, Valgarath. The Shin Shoryuken is really easy to spot when they whiff because he does two Shoryukens, so you get extra time to prepare your punish. Mm. Okay. 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 Dragon Lash interrupts. Oh, I like that. Not going... Like, only doing the first hit of the Jinrai and then just backing up. Getting that punish counter. Using the armored frames of the standing heavy to stop the jump in. Excellent. Zalbareth hasn't been th threatening to throw too much. And Fighter MP, they're going to get a little cocky. Ooh. I don't know if level 3 would have killed there with the perfect barrier scaling. Oh, it's oh, going to hit. He's in the air. That's going to kill. Raw critical arc, sit down and shut up. You know, Ken's the type of person to not return their library books on time. Ken would do that. Ken would do that. They they'd probably feel bad about it though. They might buy him buy him from the library. Another dragon lash perfect parried from Dograth. But no knockdown, allowing Fighter MP to continue their turn. Ken's Oki is so strong. Okay. Right. So, definitely a strong combo, but you kind of push your opponent out of the corner. It worked out. It's working out, but still, something to consider. You don't always have to go for the cross of, you know, crossing your opponent up there. Fighter MP is burnt out. This is Valgret's time to shine. Valgret's sitting on a full stick of butter. Okay. Valgret is not getting quite as many anti airs this match. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It misses the punish! Oh, that was your moment! Valgret! Valgret, that was your moment! Oh no! Too late! Luckily, did not get punished on the Lariat. Fighter MP had several windows to put Volgarath away, did not take any of them, but finds the crouching medium kick to drive rush cancel, taking the first game. Ken can't buy anything, can't buy shit, he lost it all on crypto and taking an entire country's economy. You know, can you really blame him for that though? Can you yes. really blame a man for extremely poor decisions? Yeah, I mean, it's only the consequences of one man's actions, but is it really their fault? Seriously, Valgareth, excellent spacing, going to back away. And Fighter MP needs to approach okay. Valgareth because of the life lead. We got an actual anti-air there. Fighter MP picking up. Watch out for the Dragon Lash. Ooh, nice. Yeah, you got to be ready for that. When you go for a throw, if they jump, you gotta be ready for that anti air. But more importantly, Fighter MP's Dragon Lash is becoming predictable. The fact that I am able to call when Fighter MP throws in Dragon Lash, that says something. Adamant says, Volgrath, I'm begging you to DI these Dragon Lashes. Yeah, they, you can DI it. Um, it is sometimes scary to do that, because, you know, if you're wrong, it, you know, you get, you're dead. Feels really bad. Dragon Lash and the Jinrai kicks are both susceptible to drive impact. Oh, let's see if Fighter MP is going to Dragon Lash. I don't know if they will because of burnout. They want to jump over and cross up Geef or at least jump away. Okay. 
Old rats maybe getting the feel of it, getting kind of into it with those uh, oh. lariats. A beautiful, thank you. You heard us through the comms, Volgarath, and now Fighter and a P is oh. stuck in the corner. But modern reactions for modern sensibilities. However, that spent all of Fighter MP's gauge. Allowing Volgarath to do just that. Hey, you want to hit me with a level 3? I'll hit you with a level 3. You didn't kill me, but you made me stronger. I didn't kill. I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of surprised there. But that's uh, very <laughs> One little jab, one little plink. Whoops, you're dead. Zangief's level 3 is scaled heavily because of the drive-in so I'm not surprised that it didn't kill. Double negative. Okay. Doing a little footsies. Okay. Yeah, Fighter MP jumping a lot more. Volgrath wanted the jump too, gets hit with the Shoryuken. Jinrai kick. It's going to continue the pressure. And Fighter MP. Oh, gets caught with the standing oh, heavy no. armor frames for days. Yeah, these oh. neutral skip moves that Fighter MP are throwing out are being destroyed by classic footsies and responses. Ooh, whip nice punish. punish. And head bug. Yeah, that was a whip punish. Fighter MP oh, does a whip punish yep. of their own, but puts themselves in the corner. Burned out and baited. Indeed. The knee is plus on block. Fighter MP was anticipating a throw. Unfortunately, Volgarath decided to do nothing, which is very strong in this situation, allowing themselves the victory. Mm -hmm. We are one to one. I, is it one to one? I, I... Or that was yeah, the please, game. did we did we mess up? That's one to one, right? Or is that two to one? Oh no, two win streak. That is Volgarath. Oh yeah, shit. That's my bad. Damn, Volgrath, you so quick. We missed an entire game. But still, well done from Volgarath. Definitely feeling like when you made the adjustments, made just calm down, got the lariats for the anti airs. You know, didn't give Ken all these free jump in opportunities. That's when, you know, things kind of started to turn for him. And then getting some really nice punishes as well. I agree. And I really like that bait at the end. Uh, Fighter MP had every reason to hit a button. And unfortunately, they just fell into Volgarath Trap. Now, that will be the end of Fighter MP, but that is a very strong showing. Good job. Next up, we'll be having. Kelmo versus Plutow. So this should be Akuma versus Marissa. Modern Akuma versus Marissa. Akuma could explode extremely fast here. This could be a two touch game potentially. Oh, it is, especially with Akuma's 9,000 health. However, my question that I'm hoping to be answered is how will they account for modern reactions? Yeah, because we have we, seen sorry, uh, we have no. seen that Plutow, they are throwing out like a lot of these Superman punches for instance um, they, not always, not every round but that is one of their go-to options and that is potentially DP bait that Maybe DI bait. We've also seen multiple times our modern players try to get the reactions checked, and even in burnout, because of the one button super, they're able to bust that in the Okay. Ooh. Nice. Now, wanting to bust in, unfortunately, Steve gets a good combo. One throw, will we get a second? Oh, instead, if that impact, that will be the first down. Okay. Yeah, going for those, you know, those kicks again. Kind of doing the footsies game. But unfortunately, 
not getting those anti airs. That this is, we've seen this from Kelmo, you know, in all all their previous matches. They like the demon flip. They like going for that overhead reset. Out, keeping the footsie game tight. However, Steve wants to stay close to Melissa, which is something you need to do. Oh, roundhouse kick for roundhouse kick. Okay. Yeah, Steve. Remember, you're a Shoto. Ooh, nice. We're gonna get the reset with the throw. Ooh, the command grab. Just a few touches away. He oh no! <laughs> yeah, he couldn't fun us because he didn't have drive. He didn't have drive. And oh no, you're in the corner against Marissa. Burnout. Oh shit. That was a mistimed super. Steve had the right idea, but unfortunately, because of timing, Vital was still in the air, able to get the victory. Adamant is informing me, so the only answer Marissa has to Demon Flip is Scudum, and that's the parry. Apparently. You don't think her crouching heavy is fast enough? If so, that sounds like really rough for Marissa. I think Steve took that last round personally. Alright, one up for Kelmo. Now Steve definitely is showing the tools of the character. Akuma just has a lot of advantages over Marissa. However, if Kutao can get the damage out, this is going to be a short round. Yep, going for those demon flips again. Nice little, yeah, Ooh. we have seen, you know, Kelmo does like to throw out some buttons in neutral. Though, so armor moves from Marissa. That's like the perfect counter to that. I don't think that was a little damage. This is Marissa we're talking about. Okay. Steve, one button Whoa. fireballs. This is some good blocking from Marissa. But Steve's gonna keep hitting buttons, keep dive flipping. And burn yourself out. I hope it's worth it, Steve. One more touch. Ah. Caught on wake up. Caught with the meaty. This is losers. If Putao loses this round, they are going home. Putao in a kind of a rough. Oh! Turning the corner. I was going to say, Plutow was in the corner, but now they managed to find the escape, and now it is Kelmo that is in a really rough position. They do have three super bars. They do have modern reactions. They want to win this meterless. Final round. Okay, if Plutow lands a level three on Steve, they're dead. Honestly. Low tick. Uh, level two wake up. Interesting choice from Putao. And Steve busts out with an OD Shoryuken. Oh, gets caught with the crouching medium punch. They're not going to have the level three to kill it, but the safe jump will grant him pressure and burnout. Marissa having a very difficult time chipping you to death. One more Superman punch. Yeah. One more Gladius for the crush. Putao taking the first game one to one we've got another close match out here blue Tao is finding just finding these ways to just reverse the situation suddenly it's like it looks really bad and then suddenly blue Tao just puts kelmo in the corner that's because akuma has only 9,000 health and marissa does over 9,000 damage worth of damage <laughs> Okay, like that's the first time I think we've seen Pluto do that. The overhead. No, uh, there was one more time, but it did not end well for them. Oh, Heavy yes. jumped in. Oh, this is big, big damage, big damage. Command throw. Malith is happy. Malith's going finally. The finally. Marissa has come back to the command throw. I, I honestly, I love that animation on the command grab. It's so visceral. I like how it's based off of a Roman statue. Yeah. Okay. We 
You got throw loops. Yeah, that is definitely a, not a breakfast of champions. Putao getting the heavy jump in. They're not going to use this level 3 yet. They want to save a bit more damage on the bar. Yeah, this is potentially a one-touch game for if any either player gets hit, they are dead. Wake up, pray to gods, and unfortunately, the gods have abandoned these. Steve with the round, and Putao, all that meter, nothing. Well, if we know anything about Akuma, is that they don't fuck with the gods. Oh, no. Akuma is his own god. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dang it. Some great momentum from Steve. Hutao just stuck in this offense. Oh, that's rough. Make this count, Steve. You better kill. And that's going to be the turn, uh, the set point. Plutao, unfortunately, will be... Oh, no, no, no! One Versa. hit, one, one touch, one like touch, one touch, one touch! Less. Magic Pixel! Magic Pixel! Ah. Oh, and the anti-air modern reactions, baby! Steve, gonna walk away from Plutal's body and it's going on to Losers Round 3. Honestly, that that kind of got me. <laughs> that kind of got me going there at the end of that. So that means a Volgarat Zangief will be fighting an Akuma. If we want to talk about volatile matches, that's one of them. Yeah, it's a, and funny enough, you wouldn't think this, but in a lot of street, in at least, well, I won't say a lot of them. I don't know every Street Fighter, but Geef, in some Street Fighters, Geef beats Akuma. Interesting. And, and this may be the case here in Street Fighter 6. I mean, they are saying Geef is off one. But we are talking about Akuma here. One of the strongest Shotos in the game. Some say better than Luke. I know. Mm -hmm. Volgarath is in chat, not looking forward to this match. <laughs> well, lucky for Volgarath, we do have a little bit of a break before we get to that match. We are having winner's finals right now. And because of that, this match will be a first to three match. Um, I better go ahead and make sure I adjust the room settings here. While we do that, let me go ahead and thank everyone in chat for coming to the Street Fighter Intermediate Tournament, number nine, hosted by Brackets About Nothing. If you haven't, please give this channel a follow. It does wonders to boosting their algorithm and growing their community. And if you want more fighting game goodness, keep in mind, we have a Grand Blue Open Tournament on Sunday and a Sham Show Tournament on Tuesday. And you can find all that information in the Brackets About Nothing Discord. Mirror Match, baby. How do you feel about Mirror Match, Mirror? I love Mirror Matches. I hate them. Uh, in a lot of street fight, in a lot of fighting games, Mirror Matches are some of my favorite matches and some of the matches I'm best at. It depends on the character, though. Like in Street Fighter V, I got really heavy into Seth, and that was like one of my best matches. Uh, I definitely see the appeal of the mirror match. I don't like it. Just because I like to have my tools, I'm a little selfish boy. But what's interesting about this mirror match is that both characters are Ryu. So mm. Ryu can be played any way you want. Rush down, zoning, lame. But Ryu's got all the tools. Yeah, I think because of that, it is a very interesting matchup. I mean... Like, it, it is, it's Street Fighter. It's, you don't get more Street Fighter than this. Ryu versus Ryu. And Weirdo with the great cash out combo, taking the first round against Dexel. Let's see how the jump ins are handled. I really want to see the anti airs. Yeah, that's, no -air. that's a big part of this. Have, if you have those anti airs on deck, because obviously, fireballs are very important to Ryu, and jump ins are. The go to counter. What the fuck? How did that cross up? 
real back jump, back jump, back jump in the corner is actually a pretty strong defense, man. Okay. Weirdo with the quick cash out first game. Two rounds to zero against Dexel. First game out of three. Yes, remember, this is a first of three match. This is winner's finals. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can't raw charge like that. Not when they're that close. But you also can't drop a jumping combo like that. But hey, okay. um, I'm not going to be throwing any shade of our players. It takes a lot of courage to come out and play a tournament online. So when we say, hey, don't drop your combos, or you can't be doing that, it's not us making fun of you. It's just, yeah. hey, these are, it, these are the It is not malicious. It is pointing out things to, obviously, you, the spectators here now. But also, when you look back at your matches, because we all know, you, you play this match on stream, you got, you're going to look back. So just listen to us. You know, commentators... Trust me, we know what we're talking about at least 25% of the time. At least. You know, we got a 1 out of 4 average. And we can see the story of the match with Weirdo. They're getting those long range buttons and then converting it to the kill. Oh no. Oh no, this is bad. Alright, cash it out, cash it out. Oh. But we get some good positioning out of it. Cross up again. Dexel has Weirdo in the corner, and Weirdo wanting to jump out. They both trade. Mirror match powers, baby. Okay, Dexel. nice story. Good anti-air. Shogaki trying to get ah, Dexel to hit a button. Oh, that, that button's at least minus nine. You can generally always sweep back a sweep. Or sure, you can sweep. Wow. Yes. One game each. Excellent punish. Not only do you get the damage, but you got your opponent closer to the corner. Dash twice? No, we're going to maintain distance with the Hadouken. Ooh, nice. Weirdo jumping in a little too much. Alright, Weirdo got the dungeon charged. Wants to hit a few buttons, but Dexel gonna throw Weirdo. Minus six! Oh, missed the punish, but gets the throw. That's that's a consolation prize. Yeah, now this is Iron Weirdo. Yeah, one hit from death in the corner. Even with the burnout on Dexel, that's a rough position. It is a rough position. You don't want to be burned out in general. Oh, no! Nice empty jump from Dexel, though, to bait that in. Anti air. Dexel has momentum. Weirdo gonna jump twice. Reuse love their jumping. I don't know why. Well, obviously, they don't have any other tools. Just ask any Ryu player. Okay, burning yourself out. Level three. Yeah, I can feel it. They're gonna be one hit from death. Not to mention, Dexel is going to be burned out too. We're just blocking a special move is dead. Or just get hit by a fireball. You know, either way. I mean, you can't just sit there. You have to do something. And, you know, some, that's like, means you're going to get hit sometimes. Alright, okay. both fighters one to one. Little weirdo, early lead. However, Dexel has meter. And they want to cash out, but if Little Weirdo has the... No, no! What? That's a little too far away. That was in the wrong zip code, Dexel. Little Weirdo. Oh, no! Every Random advantage to kill this. Dexel made some big plays. However, those big plays did not pay off and only rewarded Dexter with more damage to themselves. Little Weirdo, 2-1. One more game. Uh, I think that's actually 3-0 for Weirdo. 3-0? I think you might have got, got the Ryu switched up in one of our matches. Just to confirm. Chat. I 
I think that is the case. 3 0. Okay, so next up should be our loser semis match. So once we get those players in the room, should be Volgarath and Kelmo. There we go. This is going to be a very volatile match. One spinning pile driver from Geef is going to hurt Akuma tremendously. And Akuma is going to have to hit Geef a lot more. Remember, Geef has 11,000 HP. It makes a big deal. It makes a huge deal. We've seen it. We've seen it with Marissa. She has survived so many combos that would have killed any other character. And Geef has even more health than her. Winner of this will go to loser's final. This will be a first to three. And first to three means that you have more more of an opportunity to fuel your opponent out and capitalize. Oh, yes. And I forgot to set the room back to... So, uh, oh, wait. So, yeah, this is actually a first to two match. Oh, this first to is, two? Yeah. Loser's finals will be first to three. But I did forget to set the room settings back to first to two. So hopefully our players will remember. All right, loser semifinals is first to two. Gold Red wanted to bully their way in. Unfortunately, Steve gets to jump in and the first round. Yeah, with G Geef's, Geef's big buttons, especially standing heavy, easy to blow up with a jump in. Okay. He's slugging it out in the middle. But Volgrath gets the easy Lariat combo. Yeah, that is plus on block. That's a punish kind of throw off of the parry. Into the stud. This is going to be Steve's match. First game. Good stuff. One more for Steve. Yeah, I don't know what Geef really does against Air Fireball. I mean, obviously you can air and air it, potentially, based, depending on spacing. Does Lariat work against it? Like, OD Lariat? I don't know. Oh, got caught with the spinning lariat. Good spacing. Unfortunately, Steve is just going to pile on the fireball. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, you can see Steve, whenever they even think they're minus, they're going to OD show you again. DI air fireball? True. DI answers everything. DI the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of DI, we have our DI class right now. Kelmo taking the advantage here. You want to be checking your opponent's DI because that is big damage. Going for a DI is a huge gamble. See, very close to winning their second game. Okay, the level three is gonna make this look easy. 99 Geef, a perfect KO. Volgarath needs to find an adjustment, to find a way to get past the Kuma zoning, which is easier said than done, because this is a Kuma. Yep, unfortunately. One thing I'm, yeah, one thing I'm not seeing is the level two. True, level two. Oh, it's, it's first it's, to two. Yeah, first to two. Uh, the uh, level two, the, the vacuum with Geef. That is potentially an answer for like throwing out random fireballs or just a lot of situations. Obviously, it's a very expensive answer. God, I'm, I'm not keeping these in track. <laughs> First to two. Okay, so Volgoroth, you did well. Unfortunately, Akuma going to be Akuma. Now, next we have Dexel versus... Kelmo, we have the lore matchup, Ryu versus Akuma. I 
I'm very curious. This is obviously, I mean, both both characters are Shodos. Akuma has a little more to him. That's kind of his thing. You know, the air fireballs, the demon flips, you know, the command grab. But fundamentally, these are Shoto characters. I wonder how how their each player is going to approach this matchup. Especially the air. With Smart Steve using the Demon Flip a lot, Dexa will need to find the way to use the anti-air. However, Smart Steve has been caught with a few jump-ins, too. Okay. Nice little conversion there. Ryu hits like a truck in Oh! Ah, oh, that's yeah, not... Yeah. On jump-ins, perfect parries. If you're going to punish, it's going to be with like a jab or something. So gambling it all on the drive impact, but unfortunately Steve just hops to his back. Safe jump, double dash, no. Safe jump combo. Dexel did not recognize that it was, was a safe jump. OD show you can spell doom for that. Now what Dexel needs to do is if Steve wants to hit that button a lot, crouch. Good combo from Dexter. He needs to anticipate a throw attempt. Oh uh, yeah, burn himself out, but getting that conversion there. Yeah, right. and we see. I was gonna say, come out backing off a little more now that they're burned out. But no, they're still gonna try to be aggressive whenever they can. You gotta be aggressive, especially when your opponent is in burnout. Yeah, Kelmo, this is your time. Don't let, don't let Steve recover. Oh, unfortunately, Steve did recover. Meaty medium, and that's will be a level three. This is definitely won't gonna kill. But it still looked sick. Kelmo hitting the level oh, one. No. Unfortunately, Steve could not punish it. Gets the wall splat. Kelmo seeing stars and Steve taking him to the moon for the first game. Good response to the air fireball from Kumo. And Steve yep. going to the old reliable, oh, but no. does the show you can fails them. Excellent. Excellent conversion from Kumo. But they burnt themselves out, but they did a ton of damage. Ah, uh, and that's uh, the ton of damage, but unfortunately, like you said, burning yourself out, and that's what you get. You get DI'd. When you are burnt out, it's much more easy to get tagged with DI. However, Dexel, Dex is doing a great job blocking these gnomers, and their gauge is filled up, so they could go ahead and spend a little cash when they got it. But Steve, Steve with the anti-air. One big poke from Steve and we got ourselves a dead Ryu. Oh, but Ryu lands the drive impact. Misses, misses the oh, combo. No. We can't be missing combos at this time. Especially off of a drive impact. Uh, you, yeah, you cannot jump on this man. You can't jump on someone with moderate, especially when they're walking backwards. They got all the time to wait for you. Kumo did have that round. Safe jump. Oh, but a drive rush cancel from Kumo. Gets the side switch. Steve's going to have their back to the wall. However, they will fill up drive gauge first. Okay. A little burnout pressure. I do think Kumo should be ducking more just to hatch Steve on those and heavy kicks. Yeah. Oh shit. Drop the super. That is a punish. Dexo playing with fire, not killing Kumo right away. Oh, how would you? Okay. Sorry about that. What wow, I've been miscalling it. Thank you. Thank you. Kelmo's the Akuma. Jeez. Oh, 
Kelmo taking the throw. Dexel, early pressure. Kelmo almost stuck in the corner, but bars themselves out with a Shoryuken. And just like that, Dexel in burnout, but oh my god! Kelmo lost a ton of flesh, a pound of flesh taken from their life bar. Akuma <laughs> is so fragile, so fragile! Oh uh, no, was that worth burning out for? Is that really worth it? Daxel, Daxel could just chip out Kumo. Kumo could be chipped out. Yeah, wake up DP. Wins the air to air, Daxel. Daxel getting around. Can they win their first game? Kumo is up by two. Okay, little tower combo. Busting out. Yeah. Bust out OD for OD. They're both tied in drive gauge. Ooh. Dexel Punish worked counter. out. Deep going to use their signature drive impact. Kelmo going to go ahead and clock this in. Oh, no. Easy did do round. super. I think, Kelmo's looking to, I think Kelmo wants yeah. to win this meter low. Yeah. Being a little greedy, but it worked out. Honestly, yeah. Sometimes you gotta be like that. You gotta take every advantage you can get. Oh my gosh, that was sick. That was a sick combo, Kelmo. Level three, early damage. The damage wasn't big, but the style points was. Ooh, perfect parry. And the punish. Perfect parry from Dexo. Ha, uh, drop the combo. Now, typically, you don't want to go for big damaging combos like that off a of perfect parry because of the damage scaling. I like that choice from Dexel to just land the sweep and cross over. This is your time, Dexel. Oh, no. This is your time. Oh, no. Oh, you hate to see it. You really do. Opponents. Dexel has another chance, especially with Kelmo burnt out. Yeah, they're in the burnout pressure. But Kelmo walking backwards. Great wherewithal. Oh, it just God. didn't get the full. Dexel bet the oh. ball. Jump, Dexel, jump. Insane. Insane wherewithal. One button supers led to Kelmo's grave. Heavy roundhouse. You could tell. You could tell Dexel feeling a little more confident yeah, right yeah. now. You can see the aggression. No more. They're not going to take that fight lying down. That's what you do. Start feeling it. You turn up the heat. See, can the opponent handle it? When you get a big win like that, your confidence is surging. But Kelmo weathering the storm. Dexel, that newfound confidence. Is it going to slip by their fingertips? Ooh, for dash, throw. dash, dash, sweep. Good parry, good parry. Kelmo is burnt out. Ah. Oh, Dexel ducked the double heavy kick. Unfortunately, the jab got them. Dexel showed a lot of heart right there, but unfortunately, Kelmo. Kelmo takes the game. Well done. That that was an exciting match. We've that we've was. had yeah, we've had Dexel in here for quite a bit. Every time I see them, they're just getting a little bit better. Just bit by bit, that's how you do it. Bit yeah. by bit. Great call on the jump, Dexel. I mean, if you're you gotta do something or you die. And Dexel found a desperate answer, and that desperate answer was the correct one. So Kelmo will be fighting I'm a little weirdo. This is a run back from earlier. Weirdo was the person who sent Kelmo to losers. No, 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 my bad. My bad, that was Dexel. Man, so many Shotos today. No run back. Yeah. So, no, that's right. So I'm a little weirdo did send Kelmo to losers. Oh, 
You had oh, in the right. early one. I read it right. Yes, Riddle you did. bought both Dexo and Kelmo. Okay, my memory is failing. So this is the run back for Kelmo. Yes, it is. Kelmo needs to win six games before Dex uh, Weirdo wins three. Weirdo in the privileged position of the winner's spot. Ryu seems to be very popular with your intermediates, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, Ryu isn't the most popular character now that Ken's kind of taking that throne, but still up there. And I love some Ryu. I love some good old Street Fighter. And Ryu just looks cool as fuck in this game. Nice. Parry. Good punish. Parry. So not only is Weirdo going to get the punish, but also reclaim a lot of that drive gauge. Ah. Yeah, you cannot punish that when you're actually in burnout. Especially with Steve using a four frame. That move is minus six. Oh, no. Weirdo's so close to being burnt out. Burns themselves out. One tech fireball. Oh, Don't no. walk backward, weirdo. Weirdo, that was the right call, but not when you're grayed out. Come and get sent to the opposite side of the screen. Weirdo want to play a little classic Shoto. Fireball trap. Excellent from Kelmo. Punish counter throw. And Kelmo's gonna go ahead and sit back. They have the life lead. They under they understand fighting games. But they That's also a... understand how to get aggressive. And sometimes how you get punished for it. Oh, this is gonna be death. This is gonna be death. Ryu can dish out so much damage without meter. It is scary. Fireball trap. Some OD for OD, baby. We grow glowing yellow today. Nice six row. Who's gonna get the first game? Ooh. Winner of the first game is gonna set the pace. Okay, air to air to stop the demon. Steve standing over, ah. weirdo. If Steve lands the level three, they don't land the level three, but Weirdo misses with the level one, and Steve with the Shoryuken closes out the first set. Steve needs two more of those for the reset, and if you land a reset, you're going to do some serious mental damage to your opponent. Oh, with the top Elmo's on the loser side, by the way, chat. Yes, that is, that is correct. Let me... Update our scoreboard. Kelmo is finding the mark with these OD Shoryukens. Weirdo, not, not ready for the jumps. Weirdo is not ready for the jumps. Until now. Commentary's curse. Well, you get a man gets jumped on so many times, eventually they learn. Yeah, eventually you will get TP. Didn't believe in the counter hit. Does not have the drive gauge, cannot fully close that out. But it's okay, Hishogaki finds its mark with the C. That C is the correct choice. Your opponent's burnt out. Mega Meat Chip damage. Chip is more than a character in Guilty Gear, folks. Lands to show you can drive rush nice. in. Bait out the DP. Good bait. Takes Weirdo to the corner. Safe jump. Excellent oh, blocking from Weirdo. Yeah, I love Ooh. that. Weirdo blocked that offense, able to sniff out the OD show you can and punish his big. This could be Weirdo's match. One more big move. Hello. That time, Steve was able to punish the drive reversal for their round. We're sitting on full super. I love level threes, Maelith. That's your biggest move on deck. Yeah, just playing a little fireballs, playing a little footsies right now. Ah, uh, get the perfect parry, but fortunately, 
That is two hits. You have to keep blocking. Gotta hit it twice. You want to duck those. You really want to duck those. And you should be understanding the range of when your opponent is throwing them out. Jab in here. Not to mention, Akuma doesn't have too many overheads. So, you know, crouch block is not the worst choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was so scary off the demon flip. Weirdo was right above Steve. Was about above Kelmo. Oh, air. Oh, no. That was definitely an attempted really cool combo. Weirdo is getting desperate. You don't DI in neutral like that without an answer. Kelmo gonna back up. Kelmo has all the life, but Weirdo! Weirdo cancels the Shoyuken! Oh, this is dead. This is so dead. Critical art, baby! Shin Weirdo. True to their fashion, showing great resilience on the losing end, finds the conversion, cashes out. Ryu does so much damage, chat. <laughs> the back heavy anti air? Okay. A little unusual. We are jump heavy, aren't we? Yeah, honestly, spinning the drive reversal there after the deeper flip, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. It does uh, decrease the positioning. And Weirdo's in the groove. Weirdo is stopping these demon flips. Are you seeing this? We're getting it. If, if they do have the answer there to those demon flips, then, well, we'll s it's not over. Kale it's just not has to over. adjust to the adjustment. But it is a big proponent of Kelmo's game plan thrown out the window. Kelmo burning themselves out with the OD show. You can weirdo burns themselves out. They still get the full combo. This is some great Shoto. Oh, that was oh, that's it. Anti air, it. anti air. No show you can, but crouching fierce. Excellent. Control the skies. Control the skies. I love the crouching heavy as an answer. Inputting DP is hard sometimes, and when you have to react that fast, just go for the normal. If it works, it works. This is two things. Two things are happening with Weirdo, right? One, we're getting anti airs, and two, Akuma's low health pool means that the already strong combos from Ryu are even stronger. Oh! Deck the drive gauge. And guess what? We're gonna. Oh, wow, we were gonna even out, but unfortunately, Weirdo. Weirdo just not not getting all the damage. Weirdo doesn't ah. have a lot of privilege to be throwing drive impacts like that. Camel going to go ahead and uh, right this wrong. Weirdo just needs one more game to take this. Drive reversal. I like that choice. Kelmo okay. had to spend so much gauge to get here. One bar, just one bar. If Weirdo burns out Kelmo, no DP. But takes yeah. a good double, oh, ducks oh. it, ducks it. Thank you, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Listen to the captain here. Just duck the, duck the kicks. Okay, punish in the corner. Kelmo's going I'm, in. I oh. might be the captain of no fun, but I'm not the captain of bad advice. Okay. Oh, that Beat was the crouching fierce. Yeah. The crouching fierce was too late. That is the advantage of the DP. It is air invuln. Okay, rip oh, throw for weirdo. Good tech from Kelmo. Again with the crouching heavy. Oh, and the DP the finds its mark. Fate. We are in. We are in tournament point. One more round from Weirdo. Steve needs to stop jumping in the air. On, Again Steve. with the show you can perfect. Okay. Weirdo getting a little aggressive. Whips the donkey kick. Kelmo has the opportunity to make some big damage. Drive reversal sends Kelmo to the other side. He charges the dungeon. Crouching it heavy. And the doggy kick. 
Oh, he's Lots in the zone now. This is not the thing. You, you don't want to jump. You don't want to jump. If this ends on an anti-air from Weirdo, I'm going to laugh. Don't jump. Oh. Don't jump. Oh, oh shit. No. You got to get the combo. Oh, that was... That was One hit and, don't and jump, tournament. Don't jump. One hit and Kel's out. Oh, jump. no. Oh, my God. This is going to be the round. This is the game. Kelmo going to tie it up with that jump in. Weirdo doing a little bit too much too late. Weirdo, I I think the idea was definitely to chip out, Kel. Unfortunately, that is reactable. It is reactable, not to mention Kelmo had more than enough time to react. You should be throwing that like off of a crouching medium kick. We are literally down to a wire. We're on reset or on tournament points. Both players trying real hard. Weirdo was in that zone, getting all those anti-airs. But then the, the zone left them. It's like yeah. Kuroko no basket. You can only stay in that zone for so long. Kel is trying to adjust, put in more yeah, air I fireballs. Oh, I like the air-to-air -air attempt. Fireball, yes! Yeah. Called it! Use the driver rush to get space, throws the fireball, clutches the round. Tournament point, weirdo. Tur yes, like you said, tournament point once again. If Kel can get this one round, that is potentially a reset point for them as well. However, let's not talk about, let's not ignore the amount of nerves that both fighters are feeling. This is the type of tournament pressure that brackets on demand like to teach people to feel. Okay, not the biggest jump in to so get something. And the reversal TI, that's gonna burn him out. Don't cash out, don't cash out! No, you didn't even burn him out. One more, one more. Oh, Weirdo went for a big button and the modern reactions come through. Kelmo is going to stay alive. But without any super bar for the next round, can they pull off another victory? They just need this one round to get that reset. Okay. Yeah, Weirdo wanted to do a meaty gut check, which is plus on block a good meaty move, but Kelmo had super bar. Kelmo staying more grounded, not jumping too much, jumping second too. Weirdo with the OD show you can. That was a missed ah. jump in. Good anti air. We're not yeah. seeing a lot of anti airs from uh, Kelmo though. What we are seeing is a good combo. Oh no, you had. No! This could be the game. This could be it. That's the level three. Oh, this is it. This is the final hit. Shin. Sure you can. <laughs> And your winner for Brackets About Nothing number 9 SFX Intermediate Tournament goes to I'm a Little Weirdo. You might be a weirdo, but you're a big winner tonight, my friend. Congratulations. I'm a Little Weirdo. That was extremely well fought. That was extremely entertaining. If you are listening, do you want a winner's interview? I will ping you in the chat. That was some excellent fundamentals. And hey, Kelmo being a gracious opponent, shout outs, writing nice fundamentals, man, really showed me. Chat, uh, chat, in respect to the late great Paul Newman, if we had a secret phrase of the day, it is anti air. We talked about it before. He who controls the skies will control the game. I'm a little weirdo, did an amazing job checking Kelso's jumps. And because of that, they are sitting as the your newest champion of brackets about nothing. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Welcome, I'm a little weirdo. Tell us, how are you feeling right now? Bro, I'm feeling so great right now. This is my first local win ever. So yeah. that's uh, pretty awesome. Your first win ever in a tournament? Yeah. Well, congratulations. I, I, I'm proud that you can win. Your first win is in band here. Yeah. What were you thinking in that last match against Kelmo? 
Bro, the whole time I was watching the stream, I'm just like, please lose, bro. Like, oh my god. Like, he's he's really not that bad. He could have had me. But I just whiffed less, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so besides Calmo, did you have, like, obviously you were saying, you Calmo, please lose. But anyone else you were kind of thinking, oh, I don't want to face this guy? Um, what was that Zangief? I don't remember. Bullcrap. But I watched him. I watched him beat the Camney. I'm just like, bro, there's no way this freaking plat geef is dogging on Camney. I'm like, what? That was scary. Yeah, Bullgrass is definitely scary when he gets going. So, so any, I guess, uh, any like any finals. Do you have any shout outs you want to give out to the chat, to anyone else? Shout out anyone, any friends? I got a shout out, uh, Full Send. Uh, they're the team I'm with. Uh, that's been going on for a little while. And that's it. Captain, do you have any questions for our champion here? Uh, actually, uh, a really easy one. First of all, a little weirdo, congrats on your win. I'm glad that you're feeling real good about yourself, and you definitely deserve that victory. For those watching, why Ryu? Um, it's just always been my go-to. It was the first character I mained in this game. Um, and any time I ever played Street Fighter, which wasn't very often, uh, I would just pick Ryu. Just Ryu's cool, man. I love Ryu. I love the Shoryukens. Well, you definitely throwing a lot of Shoryukens in that match, and it was definitely a key to victory there. That's all I got for right now for questions. Bro, bro, I was whiffing so many, though. Oh, my <laughs> God. I tried to anti-air so often, but I just light punch all the time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, sometimes it works out. You get the jab anti-air. Well, again, congratulations, little weirdo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for everybody who joined us today. Thank you, Captain No Fun, for joining me on commentary. I hope you had a great time. I did. Right. Good night, thank guys. You. I'm out of here. Thank Have you, weirdo. Day. And thank you, you Malith um, or Malith? Malith. Thank you, Malith. For Honestly, having I don't, it doesn't matter you. how to pronounce it. <laughs> thank you, Brackets on uh, Bra Band Community, for allowing me to commentate here. It's my first time here. And, uh, I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I love meeting y'all. I love watching you play, and I hope to do this again. By the way, if you want to follow me on X or Twitter, as I like to say, showrunner underscore G, that's my account. I'm doing what I can to get my commentary experience in, and hopefully you'll see me at a major tournament. Feel free to post your links in the chat there. I will. Uh, is anyone here... Uh, Speaking of shoutouts, is anyone here in the Virginia or North Carolina slash South Carolina area, there is a major tournament called Beast in the East, number seven. That's an amazing event. It is half dance game tournament, half fighting game tournament, <laughs> and a dash of convention. I will be there. I will be calling Street Fighter Six, and possibly Tekken 8. So uh, you should definitely go. It's an amazing team. Arcade Impact is running the arcades, and they are enlisting a lot of the Virginia and Northern Carolina uh, tournament scene. So, if you want a low pressure tournament that's and you're in the area, please go. That sounds be... <laughs> it sounds really fun. I know we definitely have a, some band members in that area. Uh, check it out. Any, huh. any final shout-outs? It's in South Virginia. South Virginia, to be more specific. The tournament is in South Virginia. Beast in the East. Bite, Beast in as they the call East. it. Bite. Any final shout-outs? No, shout-out to everyone here. Had a lot of fun. Captain No Fun will be leaving duty, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, we got one little thing. So we do have our next tournament coming up in the server. We've got Grand Blue Open on Sunday. We have Tuesday, and a little special thing. We're doing a little Sam show. Just throwing that in there. You don't have to, Trust me, you don't have to know Sam show. No one else is going to know the game. So it's just for fun. Um, and then other than that, that's pretty much it for the rest of the month. We'll have our schedule out for next month sometime soon. Not exactly. Don't know exactly when. Otherwise, thank you again, Captain, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you, Cotter, for being our TO tonight. Have a great night.
Have a great night.